I want to address some of the ethical and values implications for leaders. It's important to note that leadership is synonymous with change. Pretty much all of the commentators on leadership say the same thing. And because it's synonymous with change, by definition, a leader has to get other people to do things in different ways. It means that they are impacted in some way that may be either in tune with or against their own value systems. Denis Bourgeois noted that there are four logics behind this relationship between change and leadership. There's the logic of principle versus the logic of consequences and outcomes. Almost the utilitarian approach of the greatest good for the greatest number. But there's also the laissez-faire minimalist intervention. Let's just see what happens if I nudge things along. And the maximum intervention. I really need to get people to change. That, of course, requires great powers of persuasion, but it also means you could fall foul of manipulation, which in itself raises ethical issues. Beyond the relationship of leadership and change, there is the importance of values. Most commentators now believe that leadership is a values-driven activity. Some would go so far as to say without good values, you cannot be a leader, which by definition would exclude people like Hitler. John Gardner said that leaders represent the values of the society. They're there to renew values, to make things better. Let's just pause at this point, though, and consider the distinction between values, ethics, and virtues. Values, those are the beliefs we have about the society around us. And usually, we reference our values if we try to justify a course of action. Virtues, they tend to be innate. They tend to be something we bring to the party in everything we do. We're honest. We are transparent, we are closed. We prefer honest people, we prefer honest dealings. We like to be closed with people, we don't want to share ourselves. Those are the virtues, it goes right back to Plato's time. And then ethics, ethics tends to be a code of conduct. So you've got an ethical code of conduct for the medical profession, you to a certain extent have it for the engineering profession, you don't actually have it for politicians. There is no such thing. In fact, there are many studies which discuss the relationship between values and the leadership process. E.O. Williams and others demonstrated that the greater the congruence between the followers and leaders on the values that they share, that they have in common, then the less likely the followers are to be cynical about the leader. So one could argue that if we're cynical about politicians, it's because we don't really share the same values. On the other hand, if we like a politician, we think they're doing good things, it's quite likely that we have congruent values. Now this idea of congruence is important. It doesn't mean it's exactly the same. We all bring many, many different values and virtues to every part of our lives. The idea of congruence is the pieces that are appropriate to the task at hand, the process, the issue that's being discussed, the change. That is the same, or at least similar. At least enough for us to be able to relate leader to follower. After all, there's no such thing as a leader in a vacuum. You have to have a follower to be a leader. You can't just sit in a cupboard and pretend to lead. So, there's got to be some kind of congruence of values, and it has to be related to some kind of change process. As I noted, ethics is a code of behavior, somewhat prescribed, often written down. Bernard Williams said that although that's important, frankly, we as individuals bring a lot more to the party. It's the individual that finally takes the decision. Leadership is often connected with utilitarianism, the greatest good for the greatest number, and sometimes that's a helpful concept. Though Bernard Williams himself drove a bit of a hole through that. He used the example of Jim, who was taken hostage in a Latin American country. He was asked by the terrorist if he would shoot one of the 20 people and if that was the case, the terrorists would let the other 19 go. If he didn't shoot that one person, all 20 would be shot. Not a very nice choice to make. And frankly, there's not much utilitarianism in there. Williams does suggest that there is such a thing as a thick value. Gratitude, lying, honesty, dishonesty, which we can all recognize. But that's not really very helpful when thinking about the relationship between leader and follower. We need much more granularity. So, 
how does the congruence at a more granular level between leader and follower get created? Well, it gets talked about. But even more importantly, it gets acted upon. The leader acts in a way which is congruent with the value system, with the virtues that they have. If the followers appreciate it and like it, it becomes something they want to follow. It becomes congruent with their own ways of thinking about life. So that congruence gets built up over time. A really strong leader can build it very quickly. Mandela would be a great example. Gandhi would be another. Other people, frankly, have to work at it a little bit harder. The key point, though, is to be transparent. It's to show your values in action, talk about your values, and be consistent. Of course, a leader in one situation might not be a leader in another situation, and Churchill is a great example. As a wartime leader, he was brilliant, taking very difficult decisions when sometimes his own countrymen got hurt, but it was for the greater good, and it was accepted. But in peacetime, people literally wanted peace. They wanted social security systems, the National Health Service. And that wasn't on Churchill's radar screen. It wasn't actually in his value system. There do seem to be some common characteristics of leaders of all kinds in all situations, which is helpful. There's a propensity to action, a propensity to transparency, simplicity, simple communication, easy next steps, checking in with people, all the common sense things that you would do if you were working with a group of friends on a project. I would like to give you a definition of leadership which encompasses this values point, and it would be this. Leadership is the energetic process of getting people fully and willingly committed to a new and sustainable course of action to meet commonly agreed objectives whilst having commonly held values. Now that could still leave open some of the questions that Bernard Williams and others raises. It still leaves open moral hazard, but it does at least give a framework to think about values-driven leadership. So in sum, leadership is all about change. Change means getting people to do things a different way. So secondly, there must be congruence between leaders and followers at the value system level for that change to happen effectively and in a good way. Thank you.